For me, in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. Welcome to St. Paul Church, and thank you for joining us this morning. We especially welcome those who are joining us for the first time. We gather now as God's holy people to celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We now invite you to stand as we begin our liturgy. As we begin, let us sing together number 614, For the Beauty of the Earth. Good morning. Well, let's begin our liturgy with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, Jesus uses summertime parables to speak to us about spiritual life. Sitting down by the seashore, he spoke about the sowing of the seeds and the growth that follows. In this part of the world, as our gardens sprout good things to nourish the world, Christ invites us to look around us and understand the spiritual growth these things prefigured. The word of God needs to produce a good harvest in us. As we prepare our hearts to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us test the soil of our lives and turn to God's mercy that renews and nourishes us within. Lord Jesus, you have set us free from slavery of sin. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are a divine sower, sowing seeds of eternal life. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word will not return void, but will accomplish God's will. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God hear us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. O God, who shows light, show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who, who for faith in they profess, are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we invite all the children to come forth for the Liturgy of the Word. Welcome, welcome all. We have the opportunity to hear the word of God in a very special way, just for you, just for you and just for you. So may, may you go, th go from this place and have a wonderful experience of, of Jesus and his Lord, our Lord. Thank you very much. Go now and listen to God's word. Go now and listen to God's word. God's word of love. God's word of truth. God's word of love. God's word of truth. God's words of eternal life. God's words of eternal life. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation that the revelation of the children of God, for the creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in the hope of creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him, he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and then the sun rose and it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell on amongst thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. Whoever had ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, because the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but not to them, and has not been granted to anyone who has, who has more will be given, and he will grow rich, and anyone who has not, even what, what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look, but they do not see, they hear, but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, you shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, and ne but never see. Gross is the heart of, his, of his, this people. They will hardly hear with their ears and have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted, and I, I will heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but did not hear it and long to hear what you hear but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no roots and lasts only for a time. Then some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. 
The seed sown amongst the thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxieties, the lure of riches, choke, it, choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understanding it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, falling on good soil is a reality, like these young people that just, just left for their own, own, uh, own lesson, Christian lesson, fell on good soil. They're definitely on good soil. They're definitely in a good place. Uh, but some people, uh, sadly, find themselves in difficult situations uh, trying, to, trying to grow. There's also the idea of the good soil, the mindset, the mindset we all carry into this church today. We have a particular mindset, all of us. Everyone is unique. To give you an idea, like falling on the improper soil, you could think back in the old Soviet Union. It sounded really good because, because basically they wanted a classless society. They wanted a society where money was, was not needed because everyone shared equally in everything that they had. They, the, the term, the thing they used to say was, uh, to each according to his need, from each according to his ability. Now think about that, to each according to his need. You have a particular need. You have a family with five children and you need a large apartment or a, a significant house where, and you're, a, you're a, I don't know, you're a, you're a farmer. And there's another individual, he, he's an extremely talented surgeon. He, it's just him and his wife. They have a little apartment tucked away. That's pretty much the philosophy. And what they used to do too, the Soviets used to do, they would lift up people, did extraordinary things. They, they basically were told, we have this generation has to sacrifice so this class of society can come to fruition. And many people took, took it and believed it, and they struggled mightily to build this classless society. So you'll hear this story about a particular farmer on a collective farm working, working arduous hours. You hear someone in the factory doing the same thing, or you'll hear about a policeman that really does his work to keep the people safe. And they would always say, we're sacrificing for the future. We're sacrificing for this socialist society that we are building. So the, the perfect man or woman are building this particular society. Obviously, the reality is that seeds, these beautiful seeds fell on awful soil because part of the, uh, part of the story, obviously, is also uh, religion is the opiate of the people. It's just a dream. It's a, if, we, if we divest ourselves of religion, everything will go well. Everything will go well. And we know how that worked out. We all know how that worked out economically and in the lives of the people in the Soviet Union. So, so the soil can be bad and many awful things can happen because you fall on that soil. But we know many people were lifted up and uh, know Jesus well in, in this part of the world today. The hundredfold, it can be, uh, can't be accomplished. But what exactly is the hundredfold? This Soviet society obviously crashed and burned. It, it ran for 70 years and it fell apart. And what was left behind wasn't so good either as we know today. But then we also have this mindset of, uh, of uh, what this is, this hundredfold. And there's ministers this morning are preaching uh, the gospel of abundance. I don't know if you ever heard of that, but the gospel of abundance says that if you follow, G you listen to the words of Jesus, as it says here, and you understand the words and you live these words, you'll be abundant, not only spiritually, but, uh, but materially also. The material gifts of the world are supposed to be given to you. God wants these gifts to be given to you, and he will not, he will not divest you of these. The uh, gospel of abundance says there's a direct correlation between your faith life and your material, the material world that you live in. Uh, obviously, we, we Catholic Christians, uh, we don't uh, really go along with that because you could see Jesus, when he was going to die, the night before he was arrested, he said that my joy, that, that my joy may be complete and that uh, may your joy be complete, okay? May your joy be complete as mine is completed. He's going to die. He's going to die a horrible death on the cross. 
He's not talking about any material uh, gifts. Remember how, how, the, how James and John wanted to be sit, sit on his right and his left? This is for someone else, but can you drink the cup? The cup, to, uh, the cup of suffering that I am going to drink. So Jesus is basically saying there's not a direct relationship with a, with a prosperous life and a joyful life in, in, uh, as, as the world we know it and a joyful life that's spiritual. A joyful spiritual life is something very, very different. And the, whole, the term of the already not yet is what Jesus is talking about. The already, the not yet. The kingdom of God is already here. The kingdom of God can be seen in this room. The kingdom of God can be seen in a beautiful monastery or a convent where they all love, they seem to all love one another. It's almost a hundredfold. These, you've seen, we've seen uh, lives like that the, already, but we've seen the not yet too all over the world, sadly. We see the not yet, but there's already there. The kingdom of God is already progressing everywhere in the world. There's no place it isn't at where a Christian breathes. It's always there, but sometimes it's very hard to see in particular parts of our country and particular parts of the world, and sometimes it's so easily seen. You make a beautiful retreat, a wonderful uh, a retreat master, and you say, uh, the kingdom of God is here. I want to stay here. Our challenge is, our challenge is, is basically making sure we see the kingdom of God, making sure we, we strive towards that 100%, which is only is in heaven, the hundredfold, the 30-fold, the 60-fold, we're living within that, the 10-fold, the 20-fold. That's what God calls us to. Yes, there is a real-world experience of sin. Yes, there is a real-world experience of people being objectified and used, but there are also the real, the real world sees many, many places where the light of Christ shines brightly and the true and always. So Jesus is telling us, Jesus is telling us today uh, that like the introduction to the mass was a beautiful homily. What kind of soil have we, are we? What kind of soil does, us that are older, what kind of soil do we land on in our youth? And how did, how did we, how did we uh, grow as Jesus called us to grow, as Jesus told the apostles we need to grow before his, his uh, arrest and death on the cross. This kingdom of God is not in this world, in this material world, it's in our spiritual life. May our spiritual life grow, no matter what kind of soil we find ourselves on. And sometimes the mindset of the soil that we are on, we put, in, by our free will, we put ourselves in that place. That's why we always have the opportunity to uh, pray, for, pray for ourselves and others, and obviously confession, to take the weeds out, to take the brambles out, to take the hardness of our hearts that we landed on and put ourselves in good soil. We have many, many ways of doing that, and God calls us to living, living a life in good soil that he gave us if we look for it, and we can make better by our actions or by our own free will actions. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us all stand together as committed Christians and say, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down in heaven, and by the Holy Spirit he was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who is the Father, and the Son, and the Door, and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful of the greatest kindness of God the Father, who plants the seeds of faith in his children, let us turn to him in hope for our needs and those of all the world. That the church may be an instrument of peace and justice in the world, scattering the seeds of God's truth and his grace in all places at all times. We pray to the Lord. <clears throat> that Christ may guide the minds of all civil leaders so as to promote the common good according to God's will and mindful of his little ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord our For our parish community and those who pray with us that God's grace will transform our lives into rich soil that bears abundant fruit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and those who minister to them, especially Deborah Conti, that Christ's healing balm will bring them peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially the deceased parishioners and benefactors of St. Paul's Parish, that God will reward them for the fidelity and goodness in this life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Antonio Nina Bianco, who we remember in a special way at this Eucharist litur liturgy, and for all the needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving Father, you sent your word amongst us to bring forth life and renew the face of the earth. Hear our prayers. Help us bring about the growth of your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our gifts are prepared, let us sing together, Seeds Scattered in Song, number 333. Seeds scattered and sown, we
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, that she makes her prayers to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, might and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of the times and seasons. You form men and women in your own image and set, them, set humanity over the whole world and all its wonders to rule by your name over all you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you in joyful celebration we acclaim. font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. And where Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy and people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who died in your mercy. Welcome the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostle, St. Paul, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, I say to your apostles, peace I leave you and peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer our sign in the gift of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life eternal. the table of the Lord. Let us sing together Gift of Finest Weeds number 332.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. May he set his face, his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. Amen. May he look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Holy Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thank you. As we go forward, let us sing together number 382. Take the word of God with you.